Hello and welcome guys. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Is my sound loud and clear? Is my sound loud and clear? Hello, thank you for the confirmation guys. God bless everyone who just joined in. Thank the admins for helping us out. I want to also to thank our supporters, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Guys, uh, I normally don't do two live shows in one day, but I think most people uh, must have heard or have seen what happened today. Um, YouTube decided to play devil's advocate and they shut my today's live show, my earlier today live show down. So they put a worldwide block on my live show. I kid you not. So guys, I'm kind of angry, but also very happy at the same time. You know why? Because clearly we have triggered a lot of people, right? Imagine if you are not making a lot of Muslims and even YouTube angry. That means we are doing a really, really bad job, right? So clearly we are doing a nice job. This is why they are angry with us. And this is why YouTube has to play devil's advocate to protect Islam and the fake prophet from me, from us. Right? I'm a liar, Rob. Yeah. Why can't you... Why can't your Holy Spirit help you? Well, at least we have something called holy. But you heard last time, Mr. Ultimate Shirk. From now on, I will call you Ultimate Shirk because you stole one of the 99 names of Allah. You heard the, sh uh, the Sheikh, the Imam, last time saying there is nothing called holy in Islam. We have the Holy Spirit who is guiding us, right? And He is guiding us, right? We have something called Holy Bible. Your Quran is not holy. Your prophet is not holy. That means Islam is unholy. The Quran is unholy. Right? And Muhammad is certainly an unholy fake prophet. So deal with it, Muslims. So, guys, <clears throat> like I said, YouTube decided to block my today's live show. No, that's a good thing. That keeps me being motivated, triggered to make it even more worse for Islam. The more you try to block our videos, the more we are going to expose this satanic evil cult called Islam. Right? YouTube wants to play the devil's advocate to protect Islam, protect Islam from us. That means we have a bigger job to do. And it keeps me motivated. It keeps me going. So, because they blocked my video today, I decided to go live once more. <laughs> Keep doing that, guys. Keep blocking our videos. It makes me smile. It keeps me motivated. Right? Imagine if I get demotivated. That means I will stop producing nice live shows and nice videos to expose the filth of Islam, right? But you are not going to get ridden or rid easy from us, right? So guys, I want to thank you to keep supporting us. Thank you for joining the live show again. Keep supporting us, keep praying for us. We need your support, we need your prayers, right? Help me to help you guys. <clears throat> Pray with me, guys. I like always to start by praying. It's never enough to pray to our loving God, our loving and merciful God. So pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to His name. Please, Lord, guide us so we can learn to forgive others who might curse us or persecute us or maybe like YouTube trying to shut us down to protect Islam from us, Lord. Please, Lord, 
Teach us to forgive people who might persecute us, might shut us down because we are the followers of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, please give me the strength when I'm weak and in need of your comfort. Even when I'm angry, like today, I still need you to strengthen me, Lord. Because without you, we are nothing, Lord. Please give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give in to discouragement, deception and doubt. Please, Lord, please help us honor you in all our ways. We are empty without you, Lord. Lord, thank you that when I'm weak, you are strong. Lord, the devil is scheming as you see, guys, what happened today. And I know he desires to keep us from spending time with you. Lord, thank you for your grace. Because of the ultimate sacrifice of your beloved son, we are saved. Please give me the courage and wisdom today and always to overcome lies and deception. Help me not to lean on my own understanding when in everything I acknowledge you so that you can direct my words, thoughts, and action. Please, Lord, give me the courage to do whatever needs to be done, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you guys for joining in. Thank you guys for joining in. Ultimate truth. Keep listening. Right? Keep listening. You are our dimmy today. Maybe you'll learn something today. So my today's video, guys, was about the crimes of Muhammad, Abu Bakr, and Khalid ibn Walid. That's the video that was taken down by YouTube. Maybe it was a flag, mass flag or something. I, you know, anyway. So, you know, to strike back, to strike back, I decided... I decided to show the shirk in the teaching of Islam, especially in the Quran. The shirk, in other words, the blasphemy, also known as blasphemy, right? Muslims call that shirk, associating partners with Allah, right? Well, actually, it's not partners only, it's basically... Uh, other idols who intercess because you need to understand that Muhammad adopted Allah from the pre-Islamic period, right? Because even the so-called pagans of Mecca, the pagan Quraysh of Mecca, they were united, muwahidun, unified in Allah, right? They worshipped the supreme idol Allah, the moon idol Allah. So Tawheed, guys, is nothing a nothing new, basically. Right? Because Muhammad claimed, and here's the, th the thing, he claimed that Abraham was a Hanifa. He was following the deen of the Hanifa, right? Which means a unified in Allah, Tawheed in Allah, right? So guys, Shirk means basically an idol that you ish associate with Allah as a partner, basically. An idol that carries or is the middle person between you and Allah, the supreme moon idol. And Allah al-Uzza wal Manad, the three bird idols used to carry, because they were bird idols, used to carry the prayers of the Quraysh of Mecca, all the way to Allah, by flying all the way to paradise, right? هذه الخرانيق العلا إن شفاعتهن لترتجى Their intercession is hoped for, right? Intercession, did you catch it? Those were the satanic verses that were given by the devil to Muhammad. Guys, I'm a little bit angry, but you know. Last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we will have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat about Islam or the mentioned topic. In other words, you can ask me questions about today's teaching and I will try to answer as far as I can. 
Muslims can also call us live on Skype for a nice and respectful discussion. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. So, as mentioned, guys, as mentioned, my video of today, my live show was taken down. And that video was about the crimes of Muhammad and his Sahaba. About this guy, Khalid ibn Walid, who used to cook and eat the head of his enemies. He cut off the head of another Muslim, Malik, and he cooked his head and ate it. And on the same night, he raped the wife of Malik. A fellow Muslim guys this guy here this monster here in front of you clearly YouTube didn't like it so let's see if YouTube will take this video down too All right so shirk the topic is shirk let us go to the shirk ayahs of the Quran right Chapter 9, Surah at tawbah other nickname for this Surah, for this chapter is the chapter of the sword, Surah as saif Now, take a wild guess why it is called Surah as saif or the chapter of the sword. Take a wild guess why. Read with me. Ittakhadu ahbarahum wa ruhbanahum arbaban min dunillahi. That means they have taken their rabbis and their monks as lords with Allah and the Messiah. Instead of Allah and the Messiah. Did you catch it? So who is God's here? Who are the gods here? Allah and the Messiah. This is an, again a false translation. Well... Let's see, they, take, they have taken, they take the rabbis and their monks for their lords apart from Allah and also the Messiah. If we read it like this, guys, you know, English is not my best language. It's not my mother tongue. But if you read it as this, do you see that the lords here are Allah and the Messiah? Do you see it? Is this maybe a very close translation or not? What do you think about this translation, guys? This is the translation of... Al Maududi. I never used this translation before. It sounds like a correct translation. Allah and the Messiah. Did we find a good translation, guys? I never used Al Maududi translation before. Hmm. Instead, min dun Instead of as lords. So here, Muhammad is attacking the Christians. For worshipping the, their rabbis and their monks. Hmm. Instead, apart or instead from Allah and the Messiah. So this seems like a very close translation. Is it good? Someone says it's good. Someone else it says it's not good. It's very close. I'm not sure. Instead of Allah and also the Messiah. Yeah, instead of, yeah, apart, instead. Anyway, so here, this is nothing but clear shirk. I hope ultimate truth, or in this case, ultimate shirk, you will finally call me, after I'm done teaching, you'll finally call me and protect for once in your life the Quran. This guy, this evil satanic worshiper, he only calls when I talk about Jesus. You know, you... You are the Najis. You are dirty because you are worshipping Muhammad. You are nothing but a mushrik according to Islam because you are worshipping Jesus. If you believe in the Quran, you have to worship Jesus according to Muhammad. He and Muhammad make a big poo poo. He made a huge mistake here in this ayah. And the proof is in front of you. Min dunillahi. This is a huge mistake. He, Muhammad, exposed himself. He made a huge mistake. 
You Muslims claim that we are mushrikun. Shame on you. Shame on you. And according to the Quran, guys, Jesus is the eternal word of Allah. That means he is the eternal uncorrupted word of Allah. That means he is equal with Allah. Yeah, you know, Muslims can't stay on topic, guys. What can we do? What can we do about these evil people who cannot even stay on topic or can defend their fake prophet who kept make, making mistakes and so they had to fix their, the mistakes of Muhammad by giving us false translation. But thank the Lord that we have people like Christian Prince and me to expose what is inside the Arabic, the original Arabic, right? It clearly says instead they have taken their rabbis and their monks as lords instead of Allah wa al Messiah wa and al Messiah the Messiah. Did you catch it? So you have to deal with this, Mr. Ultimate Shirk. Muslims, you have to deal with the shirk that Muhammad created in the Quran. Deal with it, Muslims. Eat it, swallow it. Chapter 7, Surah Al Araf, Ayah 158. Ayah 158. Fa'aminu Billahi wa Rasuli. Wa Rasuli. So believe in Allah and His Messenger. Why? Why are you, Muslims, accepting this? How can you put the messenger in Allah in one sentence? Isn't that sure? You Muslims always attack other religions saying that only Islam is the truth. Well, here we have clear shirk again for the second time. This is clear shirk because you are associating Allah with Muhammad. Did you catch it? Even the Shahada guys is shirk. There, there are Muslims who claim to be Quran only Muslims. They do even don't accept the Shahada of the Sunnis and the Shia. They say that the Shahada, Muslims guys, these are Muslims. They say that the Shahada is nothing but shirk. Right? Let him report. I, I, you know, let him report. I love it. It keeps me going. You know? If we go to Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4. Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4. Chapter of the women. Ayah 80. It says, He who obeys the messenger, thereby obeys Allah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Muslims, Muslims, oof, 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 where is Christian Prince when you need him, oof, 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 I mean, why, why this time you have to put Muhammad, the messenger, in front of Allah, now, now it's even worse, he who obeys the messenger, thereby obeys Allah, so, you have to obey Muhammad in any case? You see guys, clearly this means that Muhammad is higher than Allah. He has no sins. Think about it guys. If you have to obey Muhammad at all times, even before Allah, this is nothing but shirk. Right? Why do you have to obey Muhammad first? So you see guys, here Muhammad made himself even on a higher level than his Lord Allah. Is this not shirk guys? If this is not shirk then I don't know the meaning of shirk. Hundred percent shirk, two hundred percent shirk. This is the third example in the Quran. So here Muhammad is more important than Allah himself. Audhu Billah. Muslim will say Audhu Billah. 
Yeah, right. And the proof is in front of you. God forbid, they say. Allah forbids. A'udhu Billah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mushriks. You Muslims are nothing but mushrikun and munafiqun. Chapter 4, 48, Ayah 9. This is even more worse, guys. This is even more worse. I'm not sure about the rest of the languages of the world. But in Arabic, Arabic grammar, guys, there are rules. There are rules. Yeah, there are rules. Let me read the Arabic first. Pay attention, guys. لَتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Billahi comes first, right guys? And Rasuluhu, his messenger, comes second. Now, in the rules of Arabic grammar, guys, in the rules of Arabic grammar, everything that comes last, all the other words, all the verb words, count for the second person, or in the same sentences. So here it says, that you may believe, that you may believe, in Allah and his messenger so the rest according to Arabic grammar rules everything that comes behind the last word is for the last person the last word so in this case for Muhammad so لَتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ Bukratan wa asila, meaning that you have to, that you may believe in Allah and His Messenger and may honor Him and respect Him. Who? Muhammad, not Allah. Pay attention to the grammar rules of Arabic. So you have to honor Muhammad, you have to respect Muhammad, and you have to glorify who? Take a wild guess. Muhammad. If this is not clear shirk, guys, then I don't know what the meaning of shirk. Use this, guys. I know it's hard if you don't know Arabic. But if I explain it like this, it makes it much easier for you, right? So who is the one to be glorified? Muhammad. You see that? Glorify. Here, the translation is fixing the... Disaster that Muhammad created in the Quran. So this liar, this deceiver has to fix Muhammad's mistake. Miss Muhammad, that, that Muhammad created in the Quran. The huge disaster. Muhammad, he loves to be glorified by the Muslims. Right? Oh, oh. Oh, oh. So who are you going to glorify Muslims? Allah or Muhammad? I'm not sure if I've shown this before, guys. This is clear, clear, clear shirk. You see this ultimate donkey, certified donkey. Ultimate shirk. Be a nice kid. You are in the classroom. Be a nice kid. Pay attention to today's topic. Abdul. At least defend Islam. Ya Mushrik. You are... You are worshipping and glorifying Muhammad and the proof is in front of you. But you, Abdul, don't know Arabic, don't you, Mr. Ultimate Shirk? You are nothing but a Senegal Abdul. You don't know Arabic. You are nothing but a victim. At least pay attention and respect your Quran. The Quran is in front of you. So who do you have to glorify? Muhammad, Muslims. Mushrik guys, carry on. Mushrik means someone who is associating partners with Allah in Islam. Right? In this case, someone who intercedes for Allah. His daughters, Allah al Uzza wal Manat, they used to intercede for the people of Mecca. Right? When Muhammad prostrated and did sujood. To Allah al Uzza wal Manat and the pagan, the so called pagan people of Mecca, they loved 
Muhammad for it when he bowed down and did sujood, which is an act of worship, prostration, right? And the devil made him do it. And then Jibreel had to come to fix the problem. Jibreel came to spank Muhammad. Oh, oh, Muhammad, what have you done? I didn't give you these words. These are the high cranes, the gharaniq, the high cranes, the bird idols. Their intercession is hoped for. These are the satanic verses that Muhammad delivered to the pagan Quraysh of Mecca. God bless you too, guys. Thank you for joining in. Welcome. God bless. We are discussing the shirk in, in the Quran, guys. Right? For the people who just joined, again, let me repeat myself. Here it says that you have made to, that you may believe in Allah and His Messenger, and according to Arabic grammar rules, Arabic grammar rules, the last person, everything that comes after it, in this case, Muhammad, the messenger, everything that comes after it counts for the last person. In this case, Muhammad. So who is to be glorified him? Glorify him? It's Muhammad. This is clear shirk. If you have to glorify Muhammad, then you are nothing but a mushrik as a Muslim. Muslims are mushrikun. You are pagans. So, thank God how the tables have turned. We have a nice mushrik in the form of ultimate truth who is using the name of Allah because the truth, Al-Haq, is one of the 99 names of Allah. So, so he is double, a double mushrik. Right? A double mushrik. According to Sahih Muslim, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. And according to Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari, always with an echo so Muslims can hear it. Sahih, Sahih. Abu Huraira said that the Messenger of Allah said, I was commanded to fight the people until they testify that there is no God but Allah and believe in me. Ooh, ooh, believe in Muhammad <laughs> and what I've brought. So Muhammad will kill you, fight you and kill you if you don't believe in Allah. Look how beautiful and tolerant Islam is. When they do that, when you believe in Islam, you accept Islam, you say the Shahada, and you accept Muhammad as the Lord besides Allah, when you do that, your blood and your property are safe from Muhammad. Your blood and your property, your women, your daughters, your money, your possession is safe from Muhammad. From me, from who? From Muhammad. So who is the Lord? Ask yourselves, guys. Be honest. Who is the Lord here of Islam? Muhammad is the is is the real Allah, and Allah is basically his alter ego. So Muhammad and Allah are nothing but the same person. Like Clark Kent for Superman. Right? 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 Now if we go back to the Quran, if we go back to the Quran, someone asked me in this court to explain this ayah for him. I hope the guy is here and listening. Maybe he doesn't like me to mention his name, but I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to try to help him out with his question. In chapter 18, this is off topic, guys, but let me answer this question. This is chapter 18, Surat al kaf the cave, ayah 18, verse 18. This is talking about the seven persecuted Christians, the seven persecuted Christians, the seven sleepers, which is a Christian folktale, right, created in the year 250, Phil Herrera, maybe you can post a nice link. 
about the seven sleepers. Help me to help you, brother. God bless you. Um, it's, it is about the seven sleepers. Now the Quran doesn't know if they are, if they are four, if they are five, or six, or seven. Even Allah, and you know, they say Allah alam. Allah knows best. No, Allah doesn't know best because He doesn't even know the, the number. Right? He doesn't know how many Christians those are. And not only that, He doesn't even know if there's a dog or not. But here, in this ayah, in this ayah, it says that the dog will guard the entrance. Right? And he will stretch his forelegs, his tiny forelegs, to protect the entrance of the cave. All right? Thank you for your donations, guys. God bless you. Thank you for supporting our work. God bless you and your families. <clears throat> so how can a God, ask yourself, guys, how can a God, a small chihuahua, how can a small chihuahua protect how can a small chihuahua protect the entrance of a cave where seven sleepers, Christians in this case, are being persecuted by the Roman Empire? You know how big the Roman Empire, how, what kind of big army they have? What can a small chihuahua with his tiny forelegs do against an army of Romans? But here Muhammad, the original Quran of Muhammad, was not Kelbahum, wa kelbahum, it was wa kali'ahum. So the original story, guys, that Muhammad stole, and later Muslims corrupted the Quran, it's not wa kelbahum, it was wa kali'ahum, their guardian. In this case, the original story is about the angel. Right? So the original Christian story was about an angel and Muslims changed it in, into a dog. What can a dog, I mean, we, we, if we understand that it's an angel who is guarding the entrance, well, an angel can defeat a big army, right? He's, he's the angel of the Lord, right? But what can a dog do, man? A chihuahua? A cute chihuahua? Protecting the entrance? What can a dog, can a, what a tiny dog? against an army of Romans. Huh? Ultimate shirk? Think, man. <clears throat> hey, a guardian chihuahua. Hoof, hoof. Right, Muslims? Hoof, hoof. Let me protect the seven Christian sleepers. And Allah doesn't know if it's Four, five, six, seven Christian sleepers. Was there a dog? Was there no dog? Allah knows best, right, Muslims? Allah is the worst communicator in the world. Woof. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Matsi, uh, you can call me, my friend. Uh, I'll open up my Skype when I am done. I will open up my Skype so you can call me, okay? So if we continue, guys, <clears throat> let's see. I'm almost, almost done, guys. <clears throat> I'm always done with my rant. Consider this as a rant against YouTube. <laughs> this is my retaliation for YouTube taking down my earlier live show of today. So here in front of you, guys, you see the Muslim leader, the Muslim leader of the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood was created in Egypt. And this guy was one of the leaders, Dr. Yusuf Al-Qaradawi, highly respected Imam, scholar, PhD from Al-Azhar, the same Al-Azhar that we discussed today, that teaches their Imam students to kill and eat Muslims who do not pray or ex-Muslims cook them, grill them and eat them for leaving Islam. So this Sheikh he is saying if they had got rid of apostasy punishment, right? If you leave Islam, Islam would not exist today. This guy was honest. If there was no apostasy punishment which is 
death. If you leave Islam, you will die. Islam would have not existed today. You see how important scare tactics in, in Islam are? Like the punishment of the grave, right? I showed you, last time I showed you the cartoon about the punishment of the grave, right? So, Muhammad had to implement all kind of tactic skills, all kind of tactics to keep Muslims in Islam. But the moment Muhammad died, Muslims started to leave Islam right, left and right. And Abu Bakr had to start his Ridda wars against the apostates of Islam. The moment Muhammad died, Muslims, they, they actually believed that Muhammad was nothing but a fake prophet. Right? When Muhammad died, all kind of ex-Muslims started rebellion. Even people started, like Musaylam al kaddab started to call themselves prophets. You see, Muhammad was not the only fake prophet in the Arabic Peninsula. Musaylam al kaddab was another guy, right? So, let me open up my Skype. Ultimate Shirk, if you are a man, defend today's topic. If you call yourself a man, defend the Shirk of, of Muhammad in the Quran. I just opened my uh, Skype. You can call me, Matsi, if you like. Okay? Call me. My Skype is open, guys. Yeah, Musaylama, the original Muslim, actually, you are correct, Phil Ahurayra. Muhammad took the name, the, the, the concept of Muslims, Muslims, he took it from Musaylama. Musaylama al kaddab the fake prophet like Muhammad. Because if we do some digging, there is nothing found in the historical evidence that was called Muslims. They, those people used to be called Sarasin or Hagarin. Right? My Skype ID is the rock Christian. Okay, let me put my headset on. Hey, Matt. See, what's up, my friends? God bless. Can you hear me? Hello? Something happened, I don't know. Let's see, pick up my phone. My C is not picking up. Not sure what happened. <clears throat> Matt, can you call me back? Hello. Hey, hey, sorry. Hey, Matt, what's up, my friend? God bless. Uh yeah, God bless you. Um, thank you for addressing the Kolb Kali thing. Yeah, chapter 18, 18, right? That was your question, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, so I've, I've been reading on uh, chapter 18, Al-Kaf, for yeah. a few yeah. weeks now. I've been trying to get my head around this. Yes. And my understanding, so everyone, so you say, and, you know, you hear CP say, uh, Th this is um, the text itself. Al Kaf is getting the angel wrong and misidentifying it as a dog. Yeah. And I think it might be slightly more complicated than this, but you understand the languages better than I do. Mm -hmm. uh, just looking at, you know, um, at the consonantal text. Yeah, you see, you see, my friend, is you, if you pay attention to this word, you see the, the dot here under? You see that? You see, yeah, can, you, can yeah. you look at the screen? This dot was not there in the original. Because if you remove the yeah. dot, you can read it as kali ahum, their guardian. In this case, the yeah. angel. So when you need to understand when uh, the Arabic text, the Arabic language in text started to get 
different and the the change started to happen in the li late 9th ninth, uh, century and the beginning of the 10th century they introduce dots and vowels do you see the, the, those uh how do you call yeah. it? the yeah. stripes right all this thing on yeah, top and, yeah the tashkil uh, and the dots and naqat right the dots mm -hmm. the te mm -hmm. the text yeah, was naqat. changed right so they didn't know sometimes they didn't know where to put the dots underneath on top because if you remove this and you place it here it becomes an n right this is yeah. this is yeah. a t if you remove the both dots here on this word and you place it here it becomes a b did you catch it yeah. so totally. what, yeah. yeah yeah so a word can have different meanings if only by changing where the dot was so the original arabic guys there was no dots here you don't have a dot right here you don't have three dots so they had to guess where the dots should be placed so wakaliham became wakalbam and we believe that the original quran was in aramaic not in arabic because muhammad was getting ayahs from the cousin of khadija waraqa ibn nufl he gave muhammad the original quran when he was in mecca in the aramaic and later they translated the quran into arabic this is why you see so many aramaic words even the quran the word quran is an aramaic word it comes from qoriyonu or qoriyana right message or book for example qoriyonu yeah. it follows shlihu in the aramaic it means the message or the book or the letter of the apostle paul qoriyonu or qoriyana it follows shlihu did you catch it so even the quran is an aramaic word right yeah well can i um i think i can i think i can add a little bit to this argument Yes. If, Go ahead, my or maybe friend. tweak it slightly, yeah. and you can correct me anywhere I'm messing up. Because, so, I think rather than saying that the original, uh, that the seventh century uh, text got the story wrong and misapplied, you know, turned uh, Kalbahom into Kaliahom. No. Uh, what? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. 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 All the way around. I, Wakaliahum became Wakalbahum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. I th I think the original text was probably saying Kaliahum, mm -hmm. but they didn't have those the Tashkil, and so it's an it's actually an example of a nukat, yeah, a nukat. Tashkil is the vowels and the nukat is the, the dots, right? Oh nukats, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. I'm getting it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So so I think it's an example tanqid, of tanqid. Um, Yeah. 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 So a misapplication of the nukat and all, all the the earliest i was looking at early manuscripts and they all apply it as kolbahom um so i think they all uniformly got it wrong which is which means that it's an example of uh a, you know an unpreserved quran a corrupted quran not not necessarily the muhammad or whoever wrote yeah surah al kaf got it wrong but by the time it reached the time where they were figuring out um the nukkah uh, yeah. that they got it wrong then i yeah. guess they corrupted so think, the quran like in Sunday the ninth and tenth century yes yes yeah and not yeah. only that my so, friend if you watched uh i was watching a couple of uh videos from sira international by al fadi uh -huh. and uh, our brother jay smith god bless yeah. them okay. yeah they were talking about the book that uh was introduced on amazon the book of dan brubaker i advise a yeah. lot of um, a lot of people to buy that book it's really good book you will see they gave screenshots from dan brubaker's his new book it's a new book guys go buy it from amazon daniel brubaker dan brubaker he show he's showing he made screenshots from the manuscripts of the muslim from the top copy the sana all these existing manuscripts right especially the last important five ones right the earliest ones the top copy the sana and whatnot right all of them they played with the text they started to even change the text to make it look like the quran that was created in 1924 in al-azhar 
by Lazar in Cairo, Egypt to make it look like one Quran. So they started to change, adding words, removing words, adding new words. Even you can see, if you look at the screenshots, guys, you can see how they played, they removed text and placed. Even, I mean, you can see, right, if I know here, if I remove this and write it with a different style, you will notice it immediately, right? Hey, there's something changed, right? Because it doesn't <laughs> look similar. So if you go, guys, go buy that book and you'll be shocked. I even advise Muslims who care about the truth to go buy the book of Dan Brubaker or at least watch the videos of Sierra International. Those people are doing an amazing job. Yeah, it's groundbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. Um, let, thank you for letting me call. I'll, yeah, sure, I'll bro. get off so that you can, um, sure. maybe a Muslim will call. Sure, but no thanks. problem. Yeah, th thank you. Thank you too. God bless you, my friend. Mm -hmm. See God you around. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. So, do we have any Muslim? Yeah, Sierra International are amazing, man. Al Fadi, guys, he's an ex Muslim Saudi, an Arab, who knows who he's talking about. He used to pray at least 70 times a day, right? Let's see if Ultimate Shirk is going to defend Islam. If he doesn't defend Islam and the topic of today, I will hang in his face. Hey, ultimate truth, Mr. Ultimate Shirk, can you defend the Quran? Can you defend the topic of today? Or are you going to switch topics? You're going to call me daddy, dad. Okay. So go ahead, kid. Go and be a mushrik in your life. I don't want to waste my time with this kid. You see, guys, Muslims don't have the courage. And go, 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 go away, kid. Go, kid. I don't want to waste my time with you. So, yeah, Big Daddy Abdul Mushrik. See, he knows, he knows, he knows he can't protect the Quran from me. He can't protect his prophet from me. Even he, they need the help of YouTube, right? They need the help of YouTube to play devil's advocate to take our videos down. I'm not going to answer your call, Abdul. Okay? I knew, I knew, I knew you wanted to change topic. And the only thing you can do, you know, let me block this kid. Let me block this kid. You know, I don't want to waste my time. I understand now why CP. I understand why CP. How do I block people, guys? <laughs> I don't know even. Okay, here. Here, block. Go, go cry to your Imam. Go cry to Allah why Rob Christian and CP blocked you. Yeah, Mushrik. Yeah, Gzab ibn Gzab. Liar, son of a liar. Satan advocates. They need the help of YouTube to take our videos down. They can't answer questions about Islam. They only can attack our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because they don't have anything, no legs to stand on. You see? They have to change topics, right? This guy only calls me when I talk about Jesus, right? Right? Uh, we have someone who wants to call me. Okay. Call me if you want to. The line is open. Today we're, we'll allow people to call. No problem. If there, if there are Christians who want to call me. Drew, clear. Okay. Drew. This is Drew. Hello, what's up? Hello, Rob. Hey, Drew. What's I'm so up? glad you answered. Uh, I was just speaking to people in chat, by the way. This is the false prophet, and I hope everyone's listening. Ah, uh, hey, uh, hey, my friend. Hello. Yeah, I have a question about Hosea and all that. You know, uh, I've grown up learning about like uh, the God of the Bible is like the God of Israel, right? Mm-hmm. Um, why is it in Hosea 10 that apparently I think the Lord is speaking in these verses? And it says um, that the people of Israel will like suffer from my anger and all that. Does that like the sound of the God of Israel? Can you explain that more to me on how the God of the Bible and the God of the Torah is the God of Israel? Are you? I. What are you? Are you a Muslim? Are you a Christian? What are you? I'm a Christian. I'm you're, trying you're to Christian. learn more Christian faith and okay. all that, like uh, Christian uh, studies. That's what okay, I'm trying what's, to study. Okay. So you want to know if God of the Bible, God of the Old Testament, is God of Israel? I don't. I don't understand your question. To be honest. Oh, sorry. Uh, I haven't really like practiced it much. Um, 
Hosea 7.10 says, Their arrogance testifies against them, yet they don't return to the, their God or even try to find them. The people of Israel have become like silly, witless doves, first calling to Egypt, then flying to Assyria for help. But as they fly about, I will throw my net over them and bring them down like a bird from the sky. I will punish them for all the evil they do. Um, can you explain to me on how um, Israel, like God is the God of Israel, like our God? Yeah, you need to understand, right? In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, uh, there there was something called the Old Law, the Old Covenant, right? Yes. If if the Israelites didn't follow the Mosaic laws, they got punished by God, right? Yeah. So the God of the Old Testament, if you don't listen, if you don't obey God, God will punish you, right? This is why you see also so many violence in the Old Testament. This is why we needed the promised new covenant, right? To fulfill the old covenant and the old laws. This is why we are not under those old laws anymore. So if you have a question, I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not the right guy, you know, mm -hmm. for this. You should call Sam Shamoun. My speciality, uh, you know, I always say my oh, okay. speciality is about Islam, you know, God gave me a set of skills oh, okay. to expose Islam. But I can tell you one thing that God of the Old Testament, right? He came, he brought a old covenant and that covenant was with the Israelite and with the Israelites alone. And when Jesus came, he fulfilled the old covenant and he fulfilled the old laws, the old Mosaic laws. And from that moment on, when he fulfilled those laws, we were not under the old covenant anymore, right? So now we are under the new covenant. Love your enemies, love the ones who persecute you, etc., etc. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I can see um, like how a God who isn't punishing doesn't sound like a true God. Yeah, yeah. So, but, um, yeah, of course. So in the Old Testament, basically, uh, any sin, any sin that you do against you know, you need to understand that God of the Old Testament is a very holy, just God. Any sin, even if you steal a small candy, that means you will die in your sin, right? Mm -hmm. So this is why we needed God himself to enter the flesh as the eternal word. Jesus coming into the flesh to save us from our sins. Because if God, who is a just judge, a holy judge, he will not allow any sin, not even the smallest sin, the tiniest sin, go unpunished. So this is why we need Jesus. We are empty without Jesus. All right. Yeah, I can see um, like in like a sense right. of like, uh, like a real father and son, like uh, a father doesn't punish, does, seems weak. And like yeah. in Quran uh, 68, it says, be righteous and act justly, who act towards those who worship another God. And then in Exodus 22 through 20, it says, He that sacrificeth unto any god, save unto the Lord only, he shall be utterly destroyed. It yeah. shows the strength of God in that verse. This this God of the Quran seems so weak. Yeah. Um, it's like showing like too much weakness. Yeah, but it's and, not only uh, that, my friend, not only that. According to the Quran, there's an ayah in the Quran where it says, Allah speaking, saying that no man will... Uh, Take the burden or the sin of any person, other other person on his shoulders, right? So if you if you have a sin, I will not inherit your sin according to the Quran. But in the hadith, Muhammad contradicts his Allah, saying that Allah on the day of judgment, he will place the sins of the Muslims on the Jews and the Christians. So here we have a nice contradiction. You know, Quran and, and, and Muhammad, they love to contradict one another, right? Yes. So this is why when there is one contradiction, if we find one contradiction, that means Islam is nothing but a fake religion, right? Yep. So my friend, uh, thank you for calling. Let's see if other yeah. people will call. Can I, can I say one more thing real quick? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, this is to the Christians in the chat watching right now. There is a photo going around and it says, uh, you must kill and destroy those who worship another god, Exodus 22 through 20. And then I actually looked up that verse and, that, and that's not what it says. Be aware of Islamic deception. Like, I was almost very deceived by this. I looked it up. Make sure you look up your verses in the Bible. 
and all that. So, all right. yeah, that's why I was bringing that up. Thank you very much. I'll probably have more questions about hadiths in the future, but I don't want to take no up problem. Too much time. It's okay. Thank you very much. God, God bless, bless you. you. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. So, guys, like I said, you know, we have all kind of people. Sam Shamoon, he is killed uh, about the Bible. So, my, I, I, I can defend the Bible, right? I can defend the Bible, but the Bible is not my uh, area, right? Right? Like CP, I can expose Islam, and that's what we are doing. So, if you have any questions, guys, about the Bible, please go and ask other people who are much better than me, right? Right? But, it's very clear, the Old Testament, the Old Mosaic Laws, the 600 plus Mosaic Laws were only to the Jews, and the Jews only, the Israelites, right? And that was basically a law and punishment system. You have a law, right? You have a law, you don't obey that law, you will get punished. And that was under the Old Covenant. And in the same Old Testament, God is promising us, I believe it's in the book of Jeremiah, right guys? Yeah, 613 laws. I think it's in the book of Jeremiah, if I'm not mistaken. God is promising us to give us a new covenant. Right? And when Jesus comes and fulfills that prophecy, he fulfills the old covenant, he fulfills the old laws. Not abolish, but fulfill, right? You know? God does not change his mind, guys. It's fulfillment, right? It's, you need to understand when you start reading from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. It's one complete story from beginning all the way to end, right? So, we can cherry pick verses, guys. This is not, the Holy Bible is not the Quran. One eye of the Quran has its own context, but that's not how the Bible works. The whole Bible is one complete story from beginning, how mankind got disconnected from God by the original sin. And this is why we need Jesus as the eternal word of God to come in the flesh to save us. Because we are not worthy to save ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. Only a sinless person in the form of Jesus Christ could save us. Jesus challenged a lot of people to show him where he sinned. And they could not provide any example where Jesus sinned, right? So Jesus was sinless. Even according to the Quran, Jesus is sinless. Right? So Jesus fulfilled the law and he gave us a new set of commandments. Love your enemies. It has been told to you. Right? An eye for an eye, right? But now I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Forgive those people. Blessed are the ones who are cursed in my name. What is more beautiful than the teaching of Christ? But later, 600 years later, Muhammad came and he started the killing and hate all over again. This is why we call Muhammad a fake prophet. Because if you are a true prophet, you don't need to contradict Jesus' teaching. And Jesus said and warned us from those fake prophets like Joseph Smith, like Muhammad, like Musaylim al kadha the self-proclaimed prophet after the death of Muhammad, like many fake prophets, like uh, Murza, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed for the Ahmadiyya sect who claim to be Muslims. Right? But by their fruits you will know them. They are ravenish wolves in sheep's clothing, right? Sorry, no, Muhammad was not circumcised. Muhammad only did Hajj once. Right? Muhammad did not even obey the Quran. For example, guys, when Muhammad went and attacked the tribe of Safiya, the young lady who just got married, 
He killed her husband. He killed her father. He killed all the men. And he took her for himself. Don't call me Abdul. I know it's you. Don't call me. He, he made a new nickname and he called me. So, Muhammad didn't listen to Allah. Because the Quran clearly says you have to wait for a couple of months. Did Muhammad wait? No, he didn't. Wait. He had sex with her on the same night. He killed her husband. In the same night, he killed her husband. Sorry, on, on the same day, he killed her husband. And on the same night, he had sexual intercourse with poor Safiya, who was a young bride. He didn't wait for a couple of months. Right? Like the Quran says. So, you know, Muhammad did not need to obey his own Quran, right? Muhammad had exceptions. Yeah, and Andishan, you're correct. Mu truly, Muslims don't know their own religion. Because if they knew their religion, they could have at least defended the Quran and Islam, right? We are exposing Islam day and night. Where are the Ustads? Let's see if this is ultimate truth. I will block him again. Hello. Hello. Let's see if this is ultimate truth. I will block him again. Hello. 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 What's up? Is it you? How are you? No, yeah, go. So it's ultimate truth. Oh, what a kid. He needs to make a new nickname to call me. Playing games. What a shame, man. You have to go that low to create a nickname to call me. Yeah, you see how low these Satan worshippers are? Right? Yeah, I know, no, I know. He's so hurt. Guys, uh, first time, the first time that uh, I had an encounter with this satanic Abdul who cannot defend Islam, he made a video and he asked me to make a response video. I made a response video. Two days later, that video was taken down by YouTube because he and his boyfriends, this ultimate sure guy, he and his boyfriends did a mass flag on my video. So YouTube again had to decide to take my video down. You know? Yeah, so he's still butthurt. His behind still hurts him from that spanking I gave him. And thank to the Lord, our friends our Christian friends uploaded that video and you can find that video on my BitChute account. You know, that video that he and his boyfriends took down, it's still everywhere on social media. You know, you can try, but God is good, right? God is good. Right? So we showed you the shirk, guys. We showed you the shirk in the Quran today. We showed you how Muhammad made a huge mistake when he said that the Christians worship their rabbis and monks, which is a lie. We don't worship our rabbis and monks. That's number one. Number two, he created a big poo, -poo when he said that we worship our rabbis and monks besides, or in this case, instead of Allah and the Messiah. So who are the lords? Allah and the Messiah, right? We showed you that. So mistake number one, we don't worship our rabbis and our monks. And why do Muslims say they only worship Allah? No, your lords in Islam are Allah and Messiah and Muhammad and the uncre uncorrupted, uncreated Quran and many and many and many things. Islam is nothing but a pagan satanic cult. We also showed you how you have to believe in Allah and Muhammad from chapter 7 Surah Al-A'raf It's not enough to only believe in Allah You have to also believe in Muhammad Why not Isa? Why not Jesus? Right? Why not Moses? Why, why Muhammad? Right? We also showed you from Surah An-Nisa That Muhammad is much higher than Allah Because here it says He who obeys the messenger obeys Allah See it? So here Muhammad placing himself above his Allah. And to make it even more worse, we showed you that you have to glorify Muhammad. 
that's clear shirk, clear blasphemy, right? Because the Arabic grammar rules, the last person, everything that comes after it, here you see Muhammad, right? Let me play it. Wa rasulihi. Wa rasulihi, right? His messenger. You have to honor him. You have to honor the Rasul, Muhammad. You have to respect him and you have to glorify Muhammad. Clear, shirk, clear, blasphemy. You see? Glorify Muhammad. Clear, clear shirk in the Quran. Right? If, is there any Muslim except this Satan worshipper, Muhammad, his worshipper, ultimate shirk? Do we have any other Muhammadan who might call us and defend his cult? Any Abdul, any Muslim, any Muhammadan? My Skype is the Arab Christian. The Arab Christian. Thank you, Phil Herrera, for providing my Skype ID. Do you have questions, guys, before we close today's session? Yeah. Al Masih Ilahi. Right. Yeah, the code that uh, Waraqa ibn Nawfal, we believe it's Waraqa ibn Nawfal who gave that secret code that you can find in the Quran. Where it says, if you translate it, use the codex system, it says that Jesus, Al Masih, is my Lord. I think it's in chapter 19. Let's see if I have that. I made a screenshot and shared it with some people. I'm not sure if I still have it on my new computer. Maybe I deleted it. I don't know. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, I think I found it. Yeah. Here, guys. I gave this example in on Discord, guys. Can you see it? Can you see it, guys? Since Muslims love to say, uh, you know, the Quran has all kind of miracles, the, num the numerical miracles, right? The number 19 and whatnot. So we went to chapter 19 where it says, Kuhayas, right? It's a word like written like this, Kuhayas. You see that? This word. Now read with me, guys. Decoding these letters using Aramaic number coding Aramaic number coding to the Arabic language. Here is the coding image, right? By decoding all the letters of verse 19, ayah 1, kohayas, because this is not a word, but separate letters in the Arabic, according to Muslims. So it will give the number 195. We did this because Muslims love to talk about numbers, the miracle of numbers in the Quran which is not, uh, nothing but a deception, it's a lie, but anyway. So, the Arab Aramaic Christians started searching for words equal to this number, and we came up with Al-Masih Ilahi, meaning the Messiah is my God. And we use the same word games like the Muslims do. You know, it was just, you know, we don't, you know, we don't, it's a just a game, you know, but we came we decoded this word that you can find in chapter 19, ayah 1, that the Messiah, Jesus, is my God. So, we believe that Waraq ibn Nawfil hid this secret code in the Quran. This is why you see Alif, Lam, Mim, all these letters that Muslims cannot understand what they mean. 
this word is also they say it's uh, basically this is a letter this is a letter separate but it's written as one word so clearly it is a word but they don't know what it means it's not Arabic so you know but in fact it's just a word that is not Arabic right it's a word that is not Arabic but but we just played along you know because they like to to talk about codes and whatnot so we played their game and we came to this conclusion right you want to play those games we can pl play that game too we can play that game mm -hmm. we can play that game anyway <laughs> i have a beautiful voice don't i guys peterson oscar is calling me okay let's see hello peterson welcome hey how are you man hey what's up i'm fine yeah uh i want to ask you about uh a weird ideas that i saw like maybe a few months ago it's about uh come again Hebrews, sorry come again uh, weird a weird edit yeah that i saw like a few months ago okay yeah it's about uh jibril sitting on the seat of allah something like that jibril sitting on the seat of allah yeah i, I know about the uh, the name of muhammad on the chair of allah but i did not know about this i i didn't hear about this from who did you hear this guy my friend uh, I was because I was on a <clears throat> on a website of you know ex um, ex Muslims and someone mm. shared that hadith and I just you know, totally forgot to mm, no. to keep that one because I, usually what what I do I just screenshot my 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 cell phone but this time I forgot. Mm, I I I don't know I did not hear about this so I cannot say anything about this you know uh, I cannot talk about something that I don't. Yeah, obviously. Uh, know about or heard about. So, you know, we must be different than Muslim. You know, Muslims, they love to corrupt or put their own words when they attack the Bible. They corrupt our scripture, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> yeah, but we are not like them. When we talk about something, either we need to prove it because we are followers of the truth. And who is the truth? It's Jesus Christ, right? Christ. So, we are followers of the truth. We are followers of Jesus Christ. We cannot talk about stuff or bring stuff up that we cannot uh, 100% talk about. But you know, what so, I can do, I can look for the hadith, and if I see it, I'm going to share it in the chat, if you want. Sure, sure. Why not? Perfect. Perfect, oh, man. All right, my friend. All right. Have a Thank nice you. one. Yeah, you too. Thank you for calling. So, yeah, guys, you know, even, you know, I'm a human being. If I make a mistake, I will correct myself, right? And when I say something, guys, please correct me. I mean, I'm, I'm a human being, right? We all do may or make mistakes, right? We are not Jesus Christ. We ask God, we ask God to be as perfect as Jesus, but we are still in the flesh, right? We ask the Holy Spirit, we ask the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to guide us. To become holy, to become perfect, as close as Jesus. But we cannot be Jesus, right? I, I, I don't know. Maybe CP knows about I I never heard about I know about Muhammad's name on the chair of Allah, you know? But... I don't know about this. He'll post the link. Sunnah.com, that one, Phil? Let's see. If that's the one. Um. Is that the one? Phil, is that the one? I can't I, I, I can't see that in the in the hadith. I don't see it about Jibril sitting on the throne. Am I reading it wrong? 
Okay, okay. That one, okay. Let's see. This is the hadith, right? Is this the one, guys? Okay, let me read it. Sahih Muslim, hadith number 161. Sahih, Sahih. 161D. I was called again and I raised my head and there on the throne in the open atmosphere, he, i.e. Jibreel, was sitting. Hey. All right. So, I, Muslims. Muslims. Muslims, why is Jibreel sitting on the throne of Allah? Huh? This is Sahih Hadith. Hey guys, I am learning myself too sometimes. Oof, 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 yeah, Peter. I was called again and raised my head. Let's see if we are not mistaken in reading this. I was called again and raised my head. And there on the throne in the open atmosphere, he, i.e. Jibreel, was sitting. Uh-oh. Jibreel on the throne of Allah? So it's Muhammad speaking, guys. This is not a simple Sahaba. Muhammad is the one speaking, saying that he raised his head and there on the throne in the open atmosphere he i.e. Jibreel was sitting Muslims according to your prophet Jibreel shares the throne with Allah so how many lords do we have we have Jibreel wait 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 guys let us count we have Jibreel we have the uncreated Quran 114 chapter that will become a pale man will take the shape of a pale man and will intercede right shirk intercede like Allah al uzza wal manat so we have three bird idols the daughters of Allah we have Jibreel we have the Quran we have Allah we have Muhammad we have Isa who is the Ruh of Allah and is the eternal word of Allah uh, we have 114 chapter plus Jibreel 115 plus Muhammad plus Allah oh man those are a lot of gods in Islam a lot more than 117 or 18 whatever you see how, what kind of pagan religion Islam is thank you for this hadith I will bookmark it and use it you see guys we need to help each other right I, I don't know every you know how many hadith there are there are more than 7,000 hadith, right? Only for uh, Imam Bukhari. 7,000. I, I mean, do you think I will memorize all the hadith? <laughs> so yeah, I will use this hadith. I didn't know about this hadith, to be honest with you. Yeah, this is wow, right? See guys, this is clear proof that Islam is nothing. This is from the mouth of Muhammad, guys. I am narrating. So the Sahabi is saying, I am narrating to you. That was narrated to us by the Messenger of Allah. He said, so Muhammad said, I stayed in Hira, cave Hira, for one month. And when my stay was completed, I came down and went in the heart of the valley. So Muhammad was staying in the cave, in that same cave that Jibreel appeared to him, right? And then he went down, and somebody called me loud, aloud, so someone was calling him. I looked in front of me, behind me, on the right of my side and on my left, but I did not see anybody. He did not see anybody, Muhammad saying. I was again called, and I looked about, but saw nothing. So Muhammad still looking around, didn't see anything. He didn't see anything. I was called again, then he was again called, and raised my head. And there on the throne in the open atmosphere, he, i.e. Jibreel, was sitting. Oh. Oh, wow. And why is Muhammad afraid? 
don't uh guys if an angel appeared didn't doesn't an angel always say assalamu alaikum peace to you and starts to comfort the person and since when guys since when question since when since when does god not talk directly to his prophets why do you need a middleman why only in islam you need a middleman for the final and most important prophet that's strange right strange things and the angel forcing him to do things attacking him choking him muhammad read iqra iqra ma ana biqari i cannot read oh, of course because there is nothing to read from guys it's not that Muhammad is illiterate, right? We proved it from earlier videos. Muhammad was not illiterate. Muhammad was spiritually illiterate. That means he didn't have a book to read from. So, so the, the, the creature, in this case, this demon, Jibreel demon, was choking him, right? Choking him, kept choking him, right? Pressing him, choking him. Since when do angels do that? Only to Muhammad. If you're not going to read, I will crush your throat, right? And Muhammad, if you go to the biography of the life of Muhammad, the early biography of the life of Muhammad, you will see that Muhammad said, I saw a demon. But it was Khadija who comforted, comforted Muhammad and said, no, no, it's not a demon. I, how can you say that, Khadija? How can you say that if you don't see the creature, right? She didn't see the creature. How can she know it's an angel? And even Waraq ibn Awful didn't say it's an angel. No, he said it's your namus. It's the law. Namus means the law, guys. Right? Phil Huraira, maybe you can give them a link. Namus, Waraq ibn Nawfal said it's namus. Namus in Arabic means law. It doesn't mean angel. So, as you see, Islam is created. We always say that Islam is created on the assumption of Khadija. And we know what the assumption is. The assumption is the peep of all peeps. You can fill that in, right? Assumption is the peep of all peeps. Right? I always love to say that Islam is created on an assumption, on the deception, because Khadija deceived her father because the father of Khadija was the number one noble guy in Mecca, right? He didn't want to give his daughter to Muhammad. Muhammad was poor. So Khadija deceived his, her father, made him drunk, right? And the next day when her father woke up, she was married to Muhammad. So Islam is created. The early beginning of Islam, Islam is created on the deception. One, when Muhammad went to Khadija, she asked him to sit on her lap, right? So Muhammad gave a lap dance to Khadija. Then she took off her clothes. So Islam is created on an assumption. Islam is created on a deception. Islam is created on a lap dance by Muhammad to Khadija. And Islam is created by a striptease, right? The striptease of Khadija when she took off her clothes right and that creature went away then she concluded this this cannot be a demon this must be an angel but she didn't saw the angel right so-called angel by the way Muhammad himself believed that it was a demon he said I saw a demon that's what Muhammad said he didn't say I saw an angel he knew this this can this cannot be an angel because the creature was choking Muhammad forcing him to do things Lord knows what that demon was doing to Muhammad in that cave because we showed you guys we showed you let me get that link just a second bear with me guys bear with me We showed you 
how Muhammad was raped by his own cousin and his uncle. My cousin raped me. Ibn Ammi had Ardi. Right? Rape. He was raped. But let me go down. We also showed you how Muhammad was being ridden by naked angels. So Lord knows what that demon that Muslims call Jibreel was doing to Muhammad. Wait. Here. Here, guys. Do you see it? Can you see this? Okay. Read with me. Read with me. They are a group of people, and then Afan confirmed the following description of those people. Inshallah, they are naked. A group of people are naked. I cannot see their genitals. So this guy, this Sahabi saying, I cannot see their gentle. Tall and thin. Then Abdullah said, they came and kept riding Rasulullah. Naked people riding Rasulullah. Meow. Yeah. And if we keep continue reading, they came and kept riding Rasulullah. And Rasulullah kept reading over them. Right? Then Abdullah continues to say, them also came to me and rotate around me and stay in my way. So I was so terrified. So this, is, this Sahabi was seeing all this happening. Right? And so I was so terrified from them so that I sat down until the first light of sunrise when they left. Then Rasulullah came feeling heaviness and pain because of them being ridden by him. Riding him, sorry. Right? Now the hadith continues and you find Muhammad trying to get out of that by saying that those naked people are angels. Did you catch it? So the angels were naked, riding Muhammad like a donkey in white robes. But then when did, why did Abdullah, this Sahabi, saw them naked? Right? And why he saw Muhammad reading Quran on them? And how come angels come as naked and ride people? In this case, Muhammad. Now again, the hadith is grade is sahih, sahih. No way out of this hadith, my dear Muslim friends. You catch it? Sahih. The same hadith was also mentioned in Al-Turmuzi. And other Islamic resources refer to the Arabic re reference. Here's the Arabic reference. Let me give you the link, guys. You can use it and go check it. It's mentioned on the, the Islamic official website, Islam web.net and it says asnadahu sahih 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 chain of narration right you see you can go check it i gave you the link and we also mentioned modern imams following the bisexual gay prophet of islam see the imam in paris there's an imam in paris who is married with with a male he's an imam and he's gay and he's married with a, another guy he fully practices islam he's a gay muslim who practices islam he pray and even do hug and open a mosque for gay muslims so there's a gay muslim mosque in the heart of paris and he makes them marry the same sex you see these people are gay they are muslims what about this one this is a beautiful one this Imam here in New York, Imam marrying two Muslim ladies. You know, they have hijab, they are Muslims. Mashallah. And you say Muslims are against uh, being gay. I mean, Muhammad was gay. Muhammad was raped. Muhammad had gay activities with different men. We showed you in our live show, right? The bisexual prophet of Islam. Alhamdulillah. Muhammad was a nice bisexual gay prophet.
New Age Muslims, yeah. Last time we checked, Muslims always say that you cannot add new stuff to Islam. So, yeah. See? These are Muslims. Marrying each other in front of the Imam. Blessing them. Abduls are hiding. Uh, Michel, Michel, Michel de and the fleece. They are, they are hiding. Sorry for butchering your name, my friend. Yeah, I know, Carolina. This is why YouTube needs to block my videos. See that? This is why YouTube needs to take down my videos. Let's see if this video will stay online on YouTube. Let's see if I will get a warning again from YouTube. My last video for the people who just joined, guys, my last video about Abu Bakr uh, and Khalid ibn Walid, his, their crimes, their mass killing, right, was taken down today. So this is my second live show today. Right. So guys, um, I hope you had a nice time on this live show. Pray, pray for us. Pray for us that uh, our videos don't get down. Download our videos as soon as possible, guys. Download our videos. YouTube is attacking us, right? Thank you, Ari. God bless you, my friend. We prove to you the shirk of Muhammad in the Quran. Someone helped me to help you, gave us a link, the hadith, that is saying that Muhammad saw Jibreel sitting on the throne. Last time I checked, only Allah is worthy to sit on his throne. How is this possible, Muslims? Right? Jibreel sitting on the throne of Allah? Clear shirk here, right? This reminds me, guys, of... Before I close, let me look up that Quranic ayah, guys. This reminds me of another shirk in the Quran. Yeah. This is the ayah, guys. Uh, this is the ayah, uh, chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, the, the chapter that is named after slaughtering a cow and taking part of the dead cow that you slaughtered, beating a dead man with it to make him alive again, resurrect him so he can point fingers at, the kill, at his killer, the one who killed him. This is why Surah Al-Baqarah is called Surah Al-Baqarah. Makes sense, right? Anyway, that's off topic. So chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 34. Here Allah is asking for shirk. And remember when, he, when we, who is we? Allah. Muslims say this is the royal we. Yeah, right. Since when is Allah we? But anyway, we know, we just prove to everyone that Allah is actually we. It's Muhammad, it's Allah, it's Jibreel. It's the Quran, it's Jesus, uh, many, many gods in Islam. So Allah said to the angels, He is commanding the angels, guys, to do sujood. Sujood is an act of worship. Prostrate. Usjudu. Usjudu. Sujood. Usjudu. Verb. Prostrate. Act of worship before Adam. So Allah is asking for shirk. To the angels. And who is not the only mushrik? Iblis, the devil. You see that? So, who is the good guy here? The devil is the good guy. Allah is the bad guy for asking shirk. Asking the angels to commit shirk. Doing sujood. Act of worship to Adam. So it seems Adam here is on the same level of Allah. Right? Did you catch it? Who is the good guy? The devil in Islam, who don't, didn't want to do sujood, didn't want to do prostrate, prostration to Adam. He refused. 
So the only good guy in Islam is the devil. You see? This is why Islam is nothing but a satanic cult. He refused to do shirk. Allah is asking for shirk from the angels and the good guy, the devil, is refusing to commit blasphemy. The angels actually are blasphemers and the proof is in front of you. <laughs> Muslims, please keep following the shirk Quran of Allah and Muhammad. Or if you really do care about your salvation, drop Islam, drop the fake prophet of Islam, come back home to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Guys, thank you for watching. I don't want to stay much longer because this is our second live show today. Um, but I had to come online to talk about today's topic, what happened and about the shirk in the Quran. Thank you for watching guys. Please download our videos, share them around before YouTube can again decides to take them down. God bless you and your families. Stay safe. Keep praying for us. May God be with you and see each other again very soon to expose this cult more and more. To save those poor victims, to show them the truth, the real hidden truth about Islam, the real face of Islam. Please come back to Jesus Muslims. We are not doing this to attack you, really. We are doing this to save you, to share the truth with you. And who's the truth? Jesus is the truth. He is the truth, the way and life. He is the life bringer. He is the truth bringer he, because he is the life and truth. He is the way. If you want to be walking the right way to God again, to be reunited with God again, you need Jesus in your life, my friends. Thank you for watching. God bless. Jesus is Lord and Islam and Muhammad are false. See you soon again.